Hey there folks, Mike from Articulate here, and in this video, I'm going to share with you how you can use some cool new features in Articulate Storyline 2, specifically the motion paths. We're going to take a look at a new trigger, and we are also going to play with the slider here. Isn't this great? Higher, lower, look at that. So hey, let's go build something awesome. Let's move over to Storyline 2 and get started. All right, so I'm here in Storyline 2, and I have gone ahead and I have added a few items to my slide to get us started. I have a background image, I have some text, and I have a slider. Now, if you're new to Storyline 2 and you've not played with a slider tool yet, it's really awesome. Go to the Insert tab, the Control drop-down, select the slider type that you'd like to add, and then simply click and drag it onto your slide. Once there, you can go to the Format area and format your slider to your heart's content and then go to Design and work on the slider properties. Now, in the slider properties, you'll notice that I have a starting point of 0 and an ending point of 10. So we have this range from 0 to 10, which gives us a total of 11 stops on our slider. So we go from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 10. Now, the reason I chose this number is because I want to have 10 items floating about my slide. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to create a series of items that will be floating about our slide. We'll do that in a moment. And then we're going to use the slider to show and hide those items. As the slider increments higher, we'll show more items. As it goes lower, we'll take those items away. And we're going to do that via a series of triggers. So that's sort of the big picture of where we're headed. Now, what we want to do is we want to add those items that are going to be floating about our slide. And to do so, we're going to add those two slide layers. You could do this on the base layer, but I like the functionality that the slide layers give me and the flexibility they give me, so that's why I'm going to use them. So I'm going to create the first one, maybe two here, and to get you started, and then I'll do the rest off screen. Otherwise, you know, it's going to take a little bit longer than you might want to listen to me or watch me do it. So I'm going to add a layer, and we'll call that layer number one. And on this layer, I'm going to insert a shape. This shape is going to serve as my little mechanism or my little item that I'll have floating about the screen, my allergen. Maybe we'll go for this little explosion symbol. That's kind of fun. We'll do a quick format shape. Maybe we'll go with a solid fill of white, drop the transparency down, get rid of the line color. Perfect. Now to this shape, which I want to float about the screen, I'm going to add a motion path. I'm going to use the curve option here going to click right in the center here and I'm going to click about the screen and I'm just going to make a nice motion path and again it's your own little world as Bob Ross used to say you can move this wherever you want it to be I'm going to end up right where it left off so there you notice that we have this motion path now the duration is only two seconds which means it's going to traverse that motion path really quickly and so what we want to do is we want to increase that. In the example that I showed you, most of my motion paths were anywhere from 40 to 50 seconds. So let's set that one at 40 seconds. Here in the path options, what we want to do is we want to, in our easing, we'll have no easing. And we will also have a relative start point. All right. So you'll notice when I created that motion path here, this new move trigger was automatically created. When the slide layer's timeline starts, it's automatically going to begin moving. Now, I also want to have it loop. So I'm going to need one more trigger. All right, and this is really cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, actually copy and paste this trigger. Let's open it. And now we're going to change the second trigger to move along this motion path that we just created when, well, not when the timeline starts, but rather when the animation completes. So here's a great new event option that we have in Storyline 2. Well, what animation? Well, when this object finishes moving on Motion Path 1, we're going to move it again on Motion Path 1. So we've just created a nice little loop there. You'll notice that it changes. Now also, down here in the Slide Property Areas, what we want to do is we want to deselect the Hide Other Slide Layers because we do want to be able to show all the layers at the same time. We'll say no to the slide seeking or the layer seeking. And what we want to do here is when we revisit, this is really up to you in terms of the functionality and the look. Um, I have mine set to resume saved state. So when the layer is hidden, the object disappears from the screen. When we come back to it, it'll pick up right where it left off. So resume saved state. So I'm going to click OK. And now basically what you've just done is you have just created a great slide layer where when it's active, when, when it's shown, the object is going to travel this motion path, 
and it's going to come roughly right back, but we do have a relative start point, so even if it doesn't get right back to where it started off, it's not going to jump or be jerky in terms of its animation. It'll simply begin the animation again right where it left off here. Perfect. So what we're going to do now, and I'll do this off screen, is I'm going to copy and paste um, these layers, and I'll do that 10 times here. So let's do this. We'll copy, and we will paste it right there. We'll call this number two. And now what I can do is I can come in, and since all those attributes are set, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to say, let's change the curve, and I'll add a different curve in here for this next layer. Look at that. If I click animations, you'll see I have a new curve path and I can change the timing up here. And so I'm just going to go through and make sure that all of my options are set, no easing and relative start point is selected. All right. And I'll also maybe do this. Let's, I don't want them all to start in the same spot on each layer. Maybe I move them about. And again, I decide, oh no, now this motion path isn't going to work. I could just delete it, add a new motion path here. So on each layer, you would want these all to be in a slightly different location in terms of where they are starting from. Great. All right, so I'm going to go do that, and I will be right back. All right, so I have gone ahead here, and I have added in the objects to all my slide layers. And you'll notice as I click through, every path a little bit different, and the starting position for all of these objects is different as well. Now back to our base layer. So with those slide layers all taken care of, our next step is to add the triggers to the slider to show and hide those layers. Now this is actually really easy to do. What we're going to do is we're going to create a new trigger and we'll begin with show. So let's show the layer. So show layer, we'll show layer one when the slider moves. So here's another new event. When the slider moves, if the slider is equal to one, let's show layer number one. Okay, now all we have to do is copy and paste. So show layer number two when the slider is equal to two. Perfect, paste again. Oops, actually I deleted. Let me undo that. Let me paste again. Number three, show layer three when the slider is equal to three. So what's happening down here in the slider? It starts at zero, goes to one, two, three, four, up to 10. So we're saying, hey, when the slider moves, if the slider is equal to one, show layer one. If it's equal to two, show layer two. If it's equal to three, show layer three so on and so forth. So I'm going to go ahead and add those triggers and I'll be right back. All right, so I have my show layer triggers all added in here. As you can see, it goes all the way up to show layer 10 when the slider moves, if the slider is equal to 10. Now, what we want to do is add our hide triggers and they're very similar. What we're going to do is we're going to hide the layer. So let's hide layer one when the slider moves, if the slider is in a position that's less than one. Now we have to do is copy and paste. Hide layer number two if the slider is less than two. Hide layer number three if the slider is less than three. So what we're saying here is the slider decreases, we're going to hide all of those layers that are in number above it. So I'm going to go ahead and finish off adding the hide layers all the way up to hide layer 10 when the slider moves if the slider is less than 10. Okay, now with our hide layer triggers all done, let's go ahead and preview. And you'll notice that there's nothing on the slide, which is as it should be. But as I start to move my slider from zero to one, our trigger says, show that layer. Let's show the next two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way up to 10. Look at that. Our objects are floating about the slide. I love it. Now, if we come back down, we will start to decrease the number on the screen all the way back down to zero. Perfect. I love it. So easy to do and so effective. It's a great opportunity to provide an interaction for your learner to dive into to explore the effect here. All right. If you have any questions about working with motion paths, working with those new triggers, those new events, working with sliders, hey, stop on by the eLearning Heroes community. We are at eLearningHeroes.com and we will be there to answer your questions and help you out. Take care.